Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about interference and diffraction of waves. So on the left hand side of your screen there is an example of interference occurring. This is interference of waves in a swimming pool. And then on the right hand side of your screen there is an example of diffraction occurring. This is diffraction of waves caused by a laser beam. So we're going to start things off by talking about interference. So interference is a phenomenon that occurs when two waves interact with one another. Suppose we have two waves coming together, and suppose those two waves have overlapping crests and overlapping troughs. These types of waves are what we call in phase. They are perfectly lined up with one another. And when two waves that are in phase come together, they're going to build each other up to result in a wave that has a larger amplitude. And this type of interference is what we call constructive interference. On the flip side, if we have two waves that are coming together and the crest of one of those waves overlaps with the trough of another, these types of waves are considered to be out of phase. When two out of phase waves come together, they're going to actually cancel one another out. And this phenomenon is called destructive interference. So we've talked about interference, now let's talk a little bit about diffraction. Diffraction is a phenomenon that occurs when a wave is passed through a slit that is comparable in size to the wavelength of the wave. So suppose we pass some waves through a slit, so these lines represent the wave crests. What's going to happen is as the waves pass through that slit, they're actually going to bend around that slit. So this is what we call diffraction. And this is very different from the way that particles behave when you pass particles through a slit. When you pass particles through a slit, they're just going to pass straight through. They're not going to diffract. They're not going to bend around that slit. Now, there's a very interesting thing that occurs whenever that involves both interference and diffraction when you pass waves through two slits. So suppose we're passing some waves, some light waves, through two slits that are separated by a distance that is comparable to the wavelength of the light. Now when this happens, each slit is going to act like a new wave source. And ultimately we're going to, what we're going to get is a pattern called an interference pattern. Okay, so again, if you shoot light through two slits uh, and you observe the resulting image on a screen, what you're gonna what's going to result is this interference pattern that has alternating bright spots and dark spots. And the reason why we get a pattern of interference is because the waves are actually traveling at different distances throughout the screen. So suppose we're looking at the very center of the screen. At the very center of the screen, the two waves Again, the two new waves separated by those slits are going to travel at equal lengths. So that's going to result in constructive interference. Those waves are combining in phase to produce a wave of larger amplitude. And so that results in a bright spot. But a short distance away from that bright spot, there's going to be a dark spot because now those two waves are traveling at different distances. So when those waves travel at different distances, now they're going to be out of phase and they're going, they're going to destructively interfere. So they're not going to produce any radiation at all, resulting in a dark spot. And if you move over a short distance again, well, you're going to get another bright spot because the, the next distance over is one full wavelength. And so you get this pattern, this alternating interference pattern of bright spots caused by constructive interference and dark spots caused by destructive interference. And this double slit type of experiment is extremely important. It was uh, one of the fundamental experiments uh, in describing the behavior of electrons. So we're definitely going to revisit the double slit experiment later. I hope you found this video helpful and as always, have a good one.